Good morning. Good morning from the Hideaway on Savannah Avenue and also from the Bullock County Historical Society. I'm wearing red and black today and I'm very proud of those Georgia Bulldogs as I'm an alumnus along with my mother, my father, and my brother. I guess you would say we truly bleed red and black. Go dogs! Today's tidbit is brought to you by Fordham's Farmhouse Restaurant, L.A. Waters Furniture Company, and the Neurological Center of East Georgia. These are fine, fine businesses here in our town, and we thank them for their support. Most of our ancestors migrated to South Georgia from North Carolina. Many were from Duplin County, such as my Franklin and Alderman ancestors. Many were also from the Cape Fear area and coastal North Carolina. Today, we're going to talk about a long ago event that occurred on the plantations along the Cape Fear River and the near port town of Wilmington. Wilmington, North Carolina was the main port town in the United States that did trade with Jamaica and the Bahamas. Caribbean slaves probably passed on the custom known of John Canoe to American Blacks via this trade route. Let's spell John Canoe, J-O-N-K-O-N-N-U. Edwin Warren was a young doctor in the early 1850s who lived at Somerset Place, one of the largest plantations in North Carolina. He wrote that on Christmas Day, enslaved men dressed up in costumes made of rags, cowbells, horns affixed to the head, and masks of raccoon skin. Some dressed in their Sunday best and wore wigs like their white masters. Others played instruments such as drums, violins, banjos, tambourines, and the like. Several men entered upon a dance of the most extraordinary character, I quote. The celebration of John Canoe occurred mainly before the Civil War. It was a male parade. Females sometimes came along, but they were never the paraders, and the parades occurred on plantations and in towns and cities either on Christmas Day or the day after. They tended to go from place to place, picking up a bigger crowd as they marched. One element of the parade was mocking of white people. One of the revelers would carry a, sh a slip and threaten children, carry a whip and threaten children with it. Another would dress in a suit and a tri-cornered hat and act out unflattering depictions of their enslavers. The parade traveled to the homes of white enslavers, white clergy, and other townspeople where they would perform until they were given money or gifts to leave. Harriet Jacobs was enslaved in Eatonton, North Carolina, and gave a rare account of John Canoe from a Black perspective. In her 1861 memoir, Incidents in the Life of a Slave Girl, she wrote that every child rises early on Christmas morning to see the John Canoeus. Without them, Christmas would be short of its greatest attraction. For a month previous, the slaves are composing songs to be sung at this occasion. Each group could contain over a hundred men, and they would begin early in the morning and be allowed to go all around town until 12 o'clock midnight, begging for contributions. They were given pennies or a glass of rum. They did not drink while they were out, but carried the rum home in jugs. So why would slave owners who held their captives in literal and figurative chains, who controlled all the weapons, the military, the law enforcement, allow a day of revelry, mocking, and intimidation? It wasn't a spirit of charity. The slaveholders saw it as a pressure relief valve. 
The idea is that you have to give people who all year long are humiliated, whipped, bossed around, told what to do, family separated, sexually exploited. You have to give them some way to vent their frustrations, some way that's basically harmless, but you need to let them vent. In other areas of the antebellum South, where John Canoe didn't exist, enslaved people were still generally given off a few days between Christmas and the New Year. They could use this time to rest or visit family. It was the only time of the year for many that they could feast or just plain party. Frederick Douglass wrote, Were the slaveholders to abandon this practice, I have not the slightest doubt it would lead to an immediate insurrection among the slaves. These holidays serve as conductors or safety valves to carry off the rebellious spirit of enslaved humanity. In the Caribbean, where many of the islands had and have black majorities, the practice of John Canoe is still celebrated on December 26th. It is now a festival during which teams, now including women, compete for the best costume, the best dancing, and the best music. Gone are the rags, the whips, and the horns. In their place are elaborate headdresses and colorful tunics decorated with feathers and sequins and glitter. Don't forget, we are hosting the Geechee Gullah Shouters right here in Statesboro in March of 2022. Don't forget that. Put it on your calendar. Thanks for sharing your time with me today. Go dogs.